Right we are, your trusted elections orb. Last Friday, the court slammed a fresh injunction on the opposition All People's Congress Party as a result of what the court described as breach of its orders. The party is embroiled in yet another court order restraining it from conducting party activities, including membership registration and verification, which should have commenced tomorrow and a 24-man committee to conduct lower-level elections. The chairman of the party's interim transitional governance committee, Alfred Peter Conte, has told the nation that the committee has removed Honorable Abdul Kabo as the secretary. Alfred Peter Conte has been given an ultimatum to resign as the committee's chairman. The two factions have been trading accusations against each other, making the divide in the party more apparent, with no clear path to redemption. Tonight, we're looking into the deep-rooted field in the APC and its prospects for the 2023 general elections. My name is Samuel Weisbanger, and this is AYV on Sunday. All right, good evening and a very warm welcome to AYV on Sunday on Channel 33, on TV, on DSTV Channel 399, on Radio FM 101.7, and on Facebook, AYV um, News Facebook page. Um, tonight, we are examining the rule of law, democracy, and peace in the APC, prospects and challenges. And um, as always, I have a star-studded panel of people who are in touch um, with the issues being discussed. I have lawyer Rashid Dubuya, Executive Director, Legal Link. Um, Rashid, good evening and welcome to YVN Sunday. I'm grateful and happy to be here today. Right, I have um, Thomas Josephus Dixon, uh, political editor. Thomas, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, thank you very much for having me. I have Dr. Leonardo Omar Bangura, the head of political science department at Frabe College, one of the constituent colleges of the University of Sierra Leone. Good evening and welcome, um, Dr. Bangura. Good, good evening, Samuel Wise and our audience. All right, I also have the communications director at the National Commission for Democracy, Reverend Shibula Kabo. Um, good evening and welcome to the show, Reverend. Good evening and thanks for hosting me. Right, and you, our viewers and listeners, can follow us. Um, drop your comments. We always do value your contributions. Share them with us on the AYV News Facebook page. We would find time to go through some of them. But please, we always admonish you to tailor your messages to the issues being discussed. No personal attacks. Just um, share your thoughts there with us. Um, let me just quickly, um, gentlemen, before I come to ask for your precursive remark on the subject matter, I would first of all um, love to take some clips. Um, let's use those clips as the basis for this conversation. Let's first join um, the interim chairman of the ITGC, Alfred Peter Conte, when he came um, to AYV on one of our sisters' program, and um, we had an engagement with him on what is currently happening in the APC. And this um, were his responses in that interview. First segment this morning, um, the All People's Congress Party for the past few weeks um, has been calling, um, some members of the party has been calling um, by, on, on the chairperson of the interim committee to resign um, Alfred Peter Conte. And um, there are allegations of um, incitement, disunity, and Alfred hijacking the party. So this morning, to um, respond to some of these concerns, we have Alfred Peter Conte with us in the studio. Um, Alfred, good morning, and welcome to Wake Up Studio. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Mm. Let's start off, um, Alfred. The party appears to be more chaotic now, even than when you were actually calling for sanity and calling um, for things to be democratized within the party, and then you to the party to call. So what is happening? Those things you were calling for, I mean, they appear to be more bold now in the party. What's the problem? Well, I think few things happened in the past few weeks, um, one of them being the move, we're shifting and shaking things mm. to move the party towards democratization. Mm. And it is something that is not welcomed to the others. Now, I want people to understand the APC is still one solid body, and the Interim Transition Governance Committee is one body. 
There's no two separate ITGC. It's but, only one. But it does not appear that way. Alfred Peter Conte's faction co would come out to the public, and there's the um, Abdul Kabo's faction coming out to the public with different messages contravening each other. So it appears there are two sets of APC members already. Yes. So my situation, we had a lawsuit. We had four defendants. Mm -hmm. And the, the ruling came out in which all four defendants are supposed to come together, basically, mm. in one way or the other. So I'm, the, the plaintiff, the guy that won the case, has no option but to work with the people he defeated. So now we have a committee of 21, 12 of which are former executive members. These are the people that we defeated in the case. So now coming together is difficult. They don't want to accept. I believe there's every effort, enough evidence mm. to show that their intention is to ensure the ITGC fails. Mm. And we have said no to that. When we, you say, we, forgive me, when you say um, those you, you, you took to court and defeated, um, is it a case of us versus them in the party at the, at the moment? In the party, yes. We mm. have some, we have what I call the some people congress. Mm. People that are in the APC because they believe in certain individuals. Right. Then you have people in the APC that believed in the party. Mm. And then you have people in the APC that just want to have a jolly moment and have everything going right. Mm. So the fight, the struggle, is between the people that believe in certain individuals. The meeting you're saying, the call for yeah. me to, to leave, you can look at the eye table. You'll see the people sitting there. These are the people that are resisting. These are the people that are always violent. These are the people that are issuing death threats. These are the people that are going out in public and issue you know, terrible things. They are members of the APC. They are members of the APC. Mm. Mm. And, and you say your, your, your push has been for democracy within the party. I, is it that agenda you're pushing that they're resisting? Not the you per se, but the agenda of democracy within the party. The agenda of democracy is what they're pushing, they're kicking against. Um, prior to me taking over, there was mass printing of cards They've printed all these fake cards. They manipulated the party's register. So they've done everything to ensure that should we go to elections, they say, since you want democracy, we're going to print cards only for people that are going to vote for us. Hmm. So there are thousands of people that applied, never received their cards. We're talking of years. Hmm. And then the people that they want, the people that they believe in, the people that they know are going to vote for them, were the only people that were receiving APC cards. So they've spent billions of leons in printing cards. Now those cards... What the day? What the day in this context? The day at the defunct executive, the mm. previous administration. Mm. So they've done all, everything possible to rig the democracy. But we came in, we put our case to the PPRC, and the case to the PPRC, the PPRC accepted the fact that the party is registered. It's not credible. So therefore, we have to go and re-register. At the same time, we have to do verification of the existing register. So that's the fact. The Those meetings you're referring to, mm -hmm. the, uh, the allegation is that, oh, Alfred has members of the, of, of the committee that the court ordered for him to bring in as a chairman. Mm -hmm. And when Alfred wants to meet, Alfred calls his, his faction, his guys, his allies, or political stooges, should I put it. Mm -hmm. And those meetings are called when parliament is sitting. So the other guys would not be present in those meetings. And evidently, when Alfred calls with his own guys, they form a quorum. So whether or not these MPs are there, let's wait, we call meeting when they have sittings in parliament and they're not available. That's the allegation here. Yeah. So those allegations are also false. Mm. We've called meetings when parliament is sitting, and they will attend. They've attended numerous meetings when parliament is sitting. Mm. 
And to say we can't do anything as a party because the parliamentarians are not around, mm -hmm. that also is not something we're willing to accept. Mm -hmm. So this is what's going on. If parliament is sitting, let's assume, mm -hmm. and we call the meeting, if those parliamentarians, all eight of them, mm -hmm. decided not to come, we have four members that's supposed to come. So we should have at least 13 people, provided everybody else have the luxury of coming to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, when that happens, you can understand, okay, we have a committee, we have 13 people, they can voice their opinion. You can ask anybody that I brought into, my, um, into the, the ITGC. Mm -hmm. I've never prepped them to go in and vote for anything or any particular. Nobody will tell me or will tell you, he told me to do this. Mm -hmm. They have freedom. So at the end of the day, you call a meeting, you're expecting to see 21 people, and then you go in, they're doing what they call a boycott. So all 12 of them will refuse to come. There is a press release to the effect, a letter that we wrote, an open letter to the leader of the opposition in parliament, basically echoing the behavior of the parliamentarians, because we've called nine meetings and they've boycotted all nine meetings. Your agenda initially is to uh, imbibe democracy into the party, but you seem to be failing. No. Um, actually, like I said, if you listen to the noise, that's what the picture they're trying to paint. As I speak to you today, we've started training people that are going to conduct the registration process. It started on Monday. Uh, we've done, I think, seven districts, as I speak, and we're working towards training people. Next week, Monday, the APC will start officially to re-register and verify the old register and have, by in 20 days time from Monday, we'll finish all the registration, we'll have a new set of register that has the level of credibility that we're looking at. And after that, we're going to go into elections. This question before we take some messages, Alfred. Um, the PPR, I, I read a, 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 a letter from the PPRC that um, the commission is concerned that even the court order, I mean, the, the party does not seem to be going with the court order. And so they invited even, I think, elders of the party and some state actors to a meeting so they can help to to redeem the APC. First of how did the committee receive that particular um, statement from the PPRC? Well, any effort to bring peace is welcomed by the committee. Mm. Any effort. Um, it's unfortunate, in my estimation and other people's estimation, mm. the PPRC has been part and parcel, if not the problem, in this particular committee. The judge... Do you consider the PPRC to be part of the problems? Yes. Go ahead. This is why. Um, we have a committee known as the ITGC. Mm -hmm. When the PPRC want to deal with the ITGC, even in their directives for the lower level elections, they were taking two submissions. When they write to us, they write two letters, one to the chairman and one to the secretary. And everything they came up with is something that just will find a divide. Mm. So I had a meeting on Monday with the PPRC chairman, and I told him to his face. I said, you have the problem. Mm. You cannot treat the ITGC as two separate entities. We're one. In fact, a newspaper came in and said the PPRC is conniving with the sacked Secretary General. I tweeted that also, mm. just so people will understand. So the fight, the, the, the problem we're having is mainly people are looking at this and they say, oh, let's see how we can make them, let, let's see how we can divide them further. What would you consider? Because...
right, um, that was Alfred Peter Conte, the chairman of the Interim Transitional Governing Committee of the Opposition All People's Congress Party, responding to allegations um, there. Well, we also spoke to Honorable Abdul Kabu, the um, secretary of the committee, to get his own side of the story. And um, this was what he submitted during that interview. Honorable Abdul Kabu, um, Alfred Peter Conte has submitted here this morning that they've, inv they've called about nine meetings and you guys have not shown up. That is you, the members of parliament, that you've not fallacious. shown up. You, you, you've you've held the committee to ransom and they can no, no longer no. wait for that you. So in, a, in other fallacious. words, you're not treating the committee with seriousness. You feel no, no, no. and operate like you own the APC and that is killing the progress of the APC. Is that anything to go by? That is fallacious. I expect the truth to come out from Alfred, as we said here. You know, that is fallacious. That is malicious. They have never summoned nine meetings. It's a big lie. It's a big lie. And let me tell you how we normally summon meetings in the 21 man committee. It is myself, the secretary, who sends the meeting notice to every member of the committee. That is how it has been happening since we formed the 21 man, since we constituted the 21 man committee. So who can call meetings in the 21 man committee? This is the secretary. So if I don't call meetings, who else has the power to call meetings? And I have called meetings countlessly. I have sent the notice to the chairman. I have sent the notice to other members. And they have deliberately refused to attend these meetings. But, but, but in the past, they were attending meetings someone by me. So, I, so, so are you saying, honorable, oh no, just quickly, out of curiosity, are you saying you've also been calling for meetings, but um, the no, chairman no. and these people have not been attending, and he also yes. have been, um, and these people have been calling meetings you've not been attending. So there is a, a, a clear line of division here that you have two ITGC running the APC? No, no, not two, not two, not two. We have only one ITGC. And the decisions of that one ITGC should be by simple majority. I, the meeting I called was attended by 14 members of the committee. 14 members asking, asking, as you said, there are how many people attended this meeting. If you are not well constituted, you don't have the right to take decisions on behalf of the ITGC. If you are not well constituted, you don't have the finesse to take any actions on behalf of the ITGC. As yet, APC was not handed over to you. APC was not handed over to you. APC is an organized political party. You are just the head of ITGC. You are not the one APC as you do in your family. APC is not your family. Where you tell your kids, go and stand here, go and sit there, go and do this. And we have been tolerating it for quite a while. Honorable Abukabu, Honorable Abukabu, just quickly, who would you want to be the flag bearer of the APC? Anybody who wins in the National Delegate Conference. That is why we want to create a level playing field. We don't want to go against the Constitution. Let me tell you the intention of Alfred. He wants to go against the Constitution by illegally reinstating Chief Samsumana so that other flag bearers will take the party to court. And the party will not have the right to contest in the 2023 election. We have stood our ground. We have said nobody will go against this constitution and the decisions of ITCC are going to be by simple majority. If you, if you are accusing uh, Alfred Peter Conte of being a sellout, Alfred has also submitted here that, I mean, you people are being um, financed by some state institutions, uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Abdul Kabu. So, in essence, he's saying you have sold the party out to the ruling class and, f and, and finding the disunity. I mean, that deep-rooted field is becoming bold because you've taken monies from, from the state to, to, to kill the party. Okay. You see, uh, 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 the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. You know, he has collected money from people and he, want, and he is under obligation to satisfy those people. You cannot collect more than Two to three hundred million from a flag bearer, and you have promised the flag bearer that you will be stating as against the constitution, as against the ruling of the judge, and you have not succeeded in doing that. You think you can force your way in doing that. You have all seen in the open that monies have been given to him for which he has not accounted, and he is so insistent, he is so dictatorial, he is so disrespectful of constitution, of state institution. When we went to PDIC, he spoke to the chairman with with, with, with arrogance. And that is the man that is presented for you. All right. Um, that was Honorable Abdul Kabu. We do apologize for um, 
the um, poor sound there. Well, if you've been following the interviews earlier, Alfred Peter Conte accused the PPRC of being one of the problems um, of the APC party. So we went out, we spoke um, to the chairman of the PPRC, um, lawyer um, Rain Bangura, Abdullah Bangura, and um, this was what he told our reporter, Salif Uchel Nokamara, in regards to responding to the allegation of the PPRC being one of the problems in the APC. The rules and regulations for the conduct of the annual level elections, they came with those to us and we published them. Eventually objections came. We had the objections. All of us sat on those objections. We did a ruling and uh, they clean up the, the rules and regulations, send them back to us, we republish in the Gazette, and uh, they became law in uh, 14 days. But in that ruling, we directed that uh, there should be a fresh registration of members. The former executive, so to speak, they were advocating that we go by the register they have now. But since there were a lot of issues relating to that register, the Alfred Peter Contest side were advocating that uh, we do fresh registration, at least to give a level playing field to everybody. So in our ruling, we upheld their own position, and we directed that uh, the party should conduct uh, lower level elections. And we did set out the guidelines as respecting the conduct of the, that registration exercise. <clears throat> so when we did our ruling, they sent me their names, the names of people that they want to partake, both sides of the divide in the ITGC. They sent names to me that these are the people who want to partake in this registration exercise. And when I received those names, I decided to call the chairman of the ITGC and the secretary of the, the ITGC to a meeting and the chairman of the TIIEMC, that is the Transitional Independent Interim Independent Elections Management Committee, which is the body charged by the court to conduct those elections. I invited the chairman that is named in the judgment to come. So all four of us were in this meeting, and then Alfred objected that he was not going to continue with the meeting if Honorable Bukagbo is sitting in the meeting as secretary to the committee, and that he had removed Honorable Abdukabu from that position, and as a commission, we should not be dealing with <laughs> Honorable Abdukabu in that capacity. So I told him, I said, yes, I saw your letter purporting to remove the secretary as secretary of the committee, and I'm also aware that the secretary you removed and his own sympathizers in the committee, they have challenged your decision that you do not have that power. So as a commission, we should not be seen to be siding one side of the divide as against the other. What we could do is to sit in the middle and maintain the status quo until the judge that gave his judgment gives an interpretation as to whether what you did is within the judgment or what you did is without the judgment. It is only at that time that we will be in a position to act in accordance with the position of uh, one of the two sides. In the first place, we should know that uh, in every organization, correspondence should be directed to the secretary. And when they met for the first time, they constituted their subcommittee, they wrote to me that Abdul has been unanimously elected by the membership of the ITGC as secretary to that committee. I have that letter. It was signed by Peter and Abdul. So we have been dealing with them in that capacity. Peter, the chairman, Abdul, the secretary. And then if you come to me now and say seven of you have met, and there is a resolution that uh, the secretary be removed as secretary of the committee, then the secretary that you have claimed to have removed from the committee, or as secretary to the committee, he is challenging that decision. As an oversight body, we cannot say what you did is correct, and we cannot say what the secretary is doing is correct. And you are an outfit that you are not a regular organ of the APC party. You were appointed, or rather created by the court. And so it is the responsibility of the court that created you to give a definition of your powers. 
Because siding with your position now, you said you have sacked the secretary. It will be tantamount to the commission endorsing that position, and which by extension is an interpretation of the judgment of the court. And that is outside the poor view of our mandate. We cannot interpret the judgment of the court. So this is why we said, okay, we will keep sitting in the middle, we will keep dealing with the two of you. I decided to write to both sides with the intention of being neutral. Otherwise, I would have continued writing to the secretary until I hear from the court, because that is the standard practice for every organization. You write to the secretary. But I chose not to write to the secretary alone because of this conflict amongst them, and decided to be addressing my correspondences to both the chair and the secretary, thinking that that would put me in the middle without either of them accusing him of siding the other. And as parties to the action that uh, led to this judgment, we also have our right to interpret that judgment in accordance with our own understanding of sin. But we have chosen not to go that path because we proffering an interpretation now could either conflict with either of the two sides. And that can be viewed as uh, us siding one side against the other. And we also think that that will not be helpful to the efforts that are being employed now to redress the impasse. You can recall I didn't make a, an audio interview because I knew we were going to come to this. You are saying we are deepening the divide in the ITGC. And I told him, if it was our intention to deepen the divide in the ITGC, there is a very simple way of doing that. I would have just reneged on my responsibility as an oversight body, sat down, and keep quiet. Then look at what is unfolding without my saying a word. That is the most effective way of deepening that divide. But I chose not to do that. I know I have a responsibility to also ensure the survival of all my registered political parties. So I threw myself into the fray. I took a middle of the situation position that uh, I think will tend to both parties. But he keeps accusing me. And he's not the only one accusing me now. Even the other side is also accusing me that I'm too soft with Abdul. They are 14 and he is 7. And I've allowed him to have his way. And I mean, I don't know, everybody is blaming me. And I am not the court that gave judgment. If they were a regular organ of the, of the party, I would have come out with the powers conferred on me and then called them to order. But they are not a regular organ of the party. They are a creation of the court. And therefore, they are not directly under my supervision. This is why I've chosen to sit in the middle. And even Abdul and his uh, supporters, they are constantly reminding me that you are a party to the action. Each time I want to call them, at least to proffer advice and direct them as to how to go, they will remind me that you are a member. I mean, you are a party to the action. And I was made a party to that action simply for procedural reasons. There were no prayers in their writ of summons against the PPRC. But they put us in because of the mandate of this commission, so that if it is necessary for his lordship to make any order directed at us, then it can be convenient for him to do so because we are a party. That is all. But let him go and ask his lawyer. The papers he filed. There is no prayer in those papers that are claiming anything from the commission because we have never transgressed against the APC. I hope people will come to their senses and realize that uh, they have the political... All right, um, that was um, Abdullah Bangura, the chairman of the Political Parties Registration Commission, responding to the allegation of the commission being one of the major problems in the APC. Well, earlier I introduced my panel. I have lawyer Rashid Dumbuya, um, executive director for Legal Link, um, Thomas Josephus Dixon, a political editor, Dr. Leonard Umar Bangura, head of department political science at um, Frabe College, and Director of Communications National Commission for Democracy, Reverend Jubila Kabu. Um, let me bring the conversation now here, um, a gentleman. We've listened to Alfred Peter Conte, the chair of the ITGC. We've listened to Honorable Abdul Kabu, the secretary of the ITGC. We've also listened to the chairman of the Political Parties Registration Commission. 
First off, um, Reverend um, Jubila Kabu, <laughs> for, for democracy, what does this impasse in the APC present? Um, thank you so much. Um, so many things. Mm. But um, let's, let's make some efforts to put everything into perspective. We are looking at um, the issue of um, participation. Mm. And um, from what has been displayed, we have a serious challenge when it comes to um, doing that. Because a key aspect of democracy is how we build consensus on issues. Mm. And um, the situation that is obtaining now, when it comes to the APC party, they've not been able to build consensus. And um, you might want to ask, but um, what actually happened? How did they get to this point? You see, <clears throat> when democracy is not anchored on the law, there are bound to be challenges. Mm. Now, everybody has the right in the context of our democracy to approach the courts and um, seek redress if you are not satisfied. Essentially, we, we, we are supposed to um, follow the due process of the law and get things done properly. But I, I, I am challenged by the fact that um, you don't expect otherwise when it comes to the decision of the courts. You see, the, the institution that I work for we focus particularly on the Constitution. Mm. And I'm looking at the Constitution of Sierra Leone, looking at uh, um, Section 35 in particular. It talks about the activities of political parties. And there is this aspect that, uh, that I've been looking at. Which is? Um, 35.4. It says, no political party shall have as a leader a person is not qualified to be elected as a member of parliament. And if we go to 76, 1A, just quickly, so that I lay some foundation or the premise for what I'm going to advance. Um, 76, 1A says, that it, it, well, let's, let's bring it the preamble. No person shall be qualified for election as a member of parliament if he is a naturalized citizen of Sierra Leone or is a citizen of a country other than Sierra Leone, having become such a citizen voluntarily or is under a declaration of allegiance to such a country. Now, um, we, we, you see, so, uh, um, somebody mentioned the issue of um, the I, um, TGC being the creation of the courts. Yes. But let me tell you what the court has done. The court has created a monster. In what sense? And well, see what see the, see what is happening. In fact, opposition is vital for democracy to work. And if the opposition cannot work because it has a problem with its leadership, then it is killing our democracy. I always say this. And I will continue to say it wherever I go, mm. probably until that message reaches the people, that all of the registered political parties in this country, they are national institutions. And therefore, they owe it to the people of this country to ensure they do what is right according to the law. But um, taking the matter to court that led to this decision, for me, that is not a problem because you all we, we want to test our institutions to see if they are working. What is but the problem? outcome mm. of that um, engagement is where the problem is. The outcome of the court, I mean the judgment. We have, we have um, as chairman, by this constitution, somebody who is not supposed to lead a political party. Check the background of Peter Conte from what I have read. Mm. He's a citizen of America. And he's not a, uh, technically, they would tell you he's not a leader of the APC. Oh, 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 oh. Chairman of, of, of uh, uh, a, a committee. committee that is running the, 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 the party. Let us, let, us, let us avoid being technical here. That is how we are destroying this country. Because we, we, we don't want to be unpopular to call things by their names. 
But that is where we, we, we started getting it wrong. So you're saying, getting, in, in essence, you're saying the, 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 the courts violates the, court, the constitution of Sierra Leone. That is, that is what, I'm, I'm, that is what I'm, I just read to you. Mm. And that is the problem. And you cannot correct a problem along the way. The moment you started it, you started on the wrong footing. It, it begins to spiral out of control. Now see what is happening. A committee puts together, based supposedly on consensus. Now everybody's refusing to work. I am, I am the boss. I am in charge. This person is saying this, everything should come for me. This other person is saying everything is co should come for me. And who are the victims here? The people of this country who are looking forward to a formidable op opposition to ensure that the ruling government is put on its toes based on what political parties are supposed to do. But look at what has happened. For almost five years, we've not seen anything sober or serious coming from the opposition because they are fighting and it's almost like fighting to the death. You see, I listened to what um, the, the um, chairman said, the interim, uh, Peter Conte. Mm -hmm. The choice of words that the people that were defeated, for me, that choice, that word, is most inappropriate in the country. If you are part of a family, you only went to court to ensure that the court will give redress on a particular matter. If you should work to hold your party together if your motives are right. But to, 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 call, to talk about, in other words, you are saying, you all from the onset, you are saying the party is divided and therefore we cannot do anything formidable. Elections are approaching. But that is what Alfred said, Reverend. Alfred clearly stated that in the party, there are those who belong to the Some People, People's Congress, and for him and his own people, they belong to the All People's Congress. Um, fine with the rhetorics. But um, I think for me, I, I see leadership as very vital to bring people together. Mm. If you took the party to court on account of the things that are going wrong, make every effort to correct those wrongs yeah. and ensure you work with all of the very, because the moment you went to court, what you've done is to, prove, to, to establish factions within the party to say, I am opposed to what you are standing for. And you don't expect those that you're opposed to, in fact, by his words, those that you've defeated, mm. to just allow you to enjoy your victory. They are going to do everything to throw Spanner into your works. So what do you do? If you are working in the interest of this very party, your, your role should be that of a unifier. Are you saying Alfred is a problem? Well, uh, um, the, the way they've, they've conducted themselves, inclusive of Alfred himself, that is where we have a serious challenge. And that is why APC is as it is. Okay. But then we must not forget that it's a national institution. And when they continue down this road, down this path, it is affecting the way our democracy should work. Let me bring in Dr. Bangura. Dr. Bangura, I mean, going back to the 2018 elections, um, you have these set of people who had the, who, who held on to the opinion that the party was destroyed from that, um, well, from 2017, when the decision to select um, Dr. Samura Kamara as the party's flag bearer for the 2018 elections. And um, those people carried on. At some point, we saw some form of reconciliation and some form of apology coming out from the leadership of the APC agreeing, setting up a committee to review the constitution um, in their quest to democratize the APC. But, but what we've not seen, even now with the formation of the ITGC, is that oneness in the APC. So the secretary would, would issue a, a press statement the chairman would come out again with another statement on the same issue, but different opinions, different perspectives. 
to the point now, the chairman is saying, wait a minute, in fact, we've removed the secretary. The secretary was part of a press conference. He read the press statement. They've given an ultimatum to the chairman to resign because he's not fit for purpose. They've accused the chairman of corruption and misappropriation. They said, the chairman himself has said when I engaged him that the biggest spender right now in the APC is um, Chief Al Haji Samuel Samsumana, who has been bailing the party out of its financial crisis. So the other guys are saying, wait, I think you're running uh, a very sweet game here that you're just paving the way for Chief Al Haji Samuel Samsumana. I mean, with all of these crises in the APC, where do you see? the APC standing at this point? Uh, Samuel Wise, where I see APC standing is on a chaotic ground. You know, the very first thing that we should note here is APC had its problems since 2017 and 2018. Mm -hmm. Starting from this clause of selection and election of the flag bearer. There, everything started... Uh, crumbling on the, on the APC party, for which, well, there was a situation in which there were 26 or so candidates running for the flag bearership, and of which the decision, the sole decision was given to the chairman, leader of the party by then. With no clear mandates and guidance, everything was left in his hands, and it created chaos, and that chaos is still affecting the APC party. Mm. Coming out to the reality that we are facing now, Mr. Alfred Peter Conte came and sued the party to court to redress what he considered to be undemocratic practices that were ruining the, the All People's Congress party. But then, we are dealing with a situation in which also we look at the very court itself, and the chairperson of that court, Justice Adrian Fisher, there are so many questions, really. The legality of him, really, to man such a case in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with a political institution, mm -hmm. which is the APC. Which is like any national institution. Yes. It's, an, it's, a, it's a politically, a national institution, a mm -hmm. political institution, yeah. which is there as one of the pillars of democracy. And so there are questions among my legal uh, colleagues mm. that are even questioning the legality of the man himself. And in what sense? In the sense that, according to the legal standings of this country, he doesn't have the mandate to, to sit on such a case. We have and, a lawyer and, here. He and, pass, and pass a judgment. He would help us. No, well, he will come on board. Yes, go ahead. So this is just part of the, mm -hmm. of the discussions. Yes. And then coming in also to the decision, already Reverend Jibilia mentioned the fact that the man, with all respect for Alfred Peter Conte, you know, there are certain things that at times we make a mistake in. That we think politics, you can view it from outside. You have to be a participant observer in order for you, first of all, to know exactly politics is such a complicated thing. Whatever it is, for me, the decision of choosing Alfred Peter Conte as interim chair, for me, I also see a problem in that one. How? Oh. In the sense that here is a man, of course, he sued the court, the, the, the party to court, mm -hmm. and then yes, but yet, does he have the capacity to really handle this particular what institution. Capacity in what sense? Capacity says that someone who knows the party. Institutional knowledge? Institutional knowledge, history, and everything. He has been out of this country for long. What role has he, what political history has he, what political knowledge has he got? Let me, let, let me no, take you back. I, I engaged Alfred when he was in the US. I had several um, interviews with him. And for him, he was then the vice chair of um, the National Reformation Movement. He was apparently the financier of the movement. To the point they had an agreement with his team members before they, uh, the, 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 the team went to McKinney to sign a memorandum of understanding with the party's um, um, outgoing chairman and leader, the former president. And for him, 
the decision was go and listen to the proposal that would be, that the, the, the party would put forward. And then we can come and discuss. The guys who went, according to him, signed without coming back in house to discuss. And so his decision to take the party to court was because the, those he believed in to have helped in reforming the party betrayed him. So he wanted to know a few things. First, he challenged um, the, 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 the legality of those who were in offices. He, he looked at um, financial probity. I mean, what, what, what are the, the accounts saying? Do we have money? Have you misused? Have you misappropriated? Have you embezzled? Have you stolen the money of the party? Those were some of his concerns. And then the, the, courts, the courts apparently has granted him all of those. And who were you thinking was best suited to have been appointed chairman when he was seen as um, like, uh, uh, like a situation where you put yourself, it's just me against the rest of the team. Well, exactly, this is my point. Mm. This is his position. And that is for me, it is not a reconciling position that he's taking. Mm. Because even the way that we have listened to him speak when you interviewed him, he did not portray as a reconciler of the party. Mm. But rather, it's like me against them situation. And that he considered others defeated, the conquered ones. Mm. And so he is the victor, is the victor. Mm. So therefore, that is why for me, in the first case, this is wearing, I blame the court. I, I speak here. I blame the court that the court has not done proper verdict and decision. Then listen to the lawyer of the PPRC when he spoke. Mm -hmm. He spoke clearly and to the point that here we are dealing with a situation in which for them, in fact, they don't know him, so to speak, because he doesn't have the legal standing according to their own directives from PPRC. In a sense that it's just... But the court has the no, power no, to do so. No, no. Yes, he, didn't deny, that, he didn't deny that, that either. So why. he's only working with the committee because the committee is a creation of the court. Yes. And the court has the power to make laws, interpret those very laws in this, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, they interpret the laws, but they can also interpret them wrongly. Mm. This is where... Are you saying that th 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 this was the case? In, in this case, it's, they know they have not interpreted. Okay. What they have done is they have first a verdict. Mm. And for me, this verdict is, for me, I don't look for a particular person to have headed this interim committee. But what I look for is the qualities of a person. Mm. The person who has total knowledge of the party itself, who has been in the party for many years, and who has served in leadership position If in you the were party. to recommend, who would that person have No, I, I don't want to, okay. to name names here. All but right. I want to give the criteria mm. of which it would have been in the interest of this nation. And I, I, I really want to say that uh, we are joking with the democracy of this nation. Who are the we? We, all of us okay. involved. The court, the PPRC, the ECSL, and we shall come to all of that. Mm. The problem is we are to develop a democratic culture and by which the parties, being an, a political institution, they have their mandate and their right to exist because they are representing a bulk of the nation with their particular interests. And so if there is any decision that is contrary to these political institutions, we are really eroding the democracy of this culture. So you're saying Alfred is not fit for purpose, but the court is supporting him, PPRC is supporting him. So all of these, I mean, strong institutions are supporting a man who is inexperienced, in your words, who is not capacitated, well-placed to lead the APC? Is that what you're saying? I'm talking out of the, the decisions that he's taking. Mm. I'm not making a judgment out of him. Right. But I'm making a judgment of the decisions and the statements he's making. And for me, those statements are not actually statements that aim at reconciling the party and bringing to democracy, as he said, democratizing does, the party. Does experience, does experience come with, um, with me, for example, have, um, spending, say, um, two decades at um, AYV or three decades and somebody who's just coming in um, with some amount of experience in, in, in management and all of that still being the, the GM of AYV, would you question his capacity? Would you question his experience? Is that what you're putting here? Samuel Wise, experience matters in everything, especially in, leader, in political leadership. Mm. More than in every other uh, place in political leadership, 
if you lack the experience, you will take the wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. And for me, with all respect for Alfred Peter Conte, he is a nice gentleman. But for me, he should have also learned to listen to the others and not just pass things and then take decisions of uh, sacking somebody and then, no. For me, if really we want to move the APC party, and it's not about the APC party, but it's about democracy of this nation. The, en the entire um, young generation or youth league of the APC then agreed at some point that the problem or one of the major problems in the APC was that you have a set of politicians who had um, thought the party was theirs. And so they were doing everything their way. And so but there was need for reforms, which necessitated the 2022 APC, um, APC um, constitution. So if that agreement was there from amongst the young people, why blame Peter Conte now because of his experience when Peter Conte was seen as one who um, championed the path to redemption? Um, is, I don't think actually, Samuel Wise, you are saying that he championed. Okay. What we can say is it brought to light and it took, a, it is a brave and courageous decision actually to take the party to court. Mm. And I think we support him for that. It is part of our democratic rights to bring the party to court when the party is not doing exactly what it's supposed to do. However, for me, my question is that maybe the steps it's taking are not paths to reconciliation. Mm. It should have taken another dimension, another direction by which to listen to all others and not take decisions that are arbitrary. Like there was another case that I, I had of a, a barricading and closing the, the party office and other things. No, it doesn't call for. Whatever it is, consensus is needed. And this is what democracy is. So as you talk about consensus, Thomas Dixon, let me bring you in. As Dr. Bangra talked about uh, consensus, let, let, let's, let's look at um, the recent letter written to the police by Alfred. Um, urging or asking the police that they should not allow any APC um, meetings anywhere, not just even at the headquarters, but anywhere. That was what he told me, that they do not have that because that would be a threat to the security of the state. Looking at how things have unfolded in the APC, do you see Alfred as the problem or those who he was fighting against um, to, 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 to leave their offices and just bring democracy to the APC. Who is the problem and where does the problem lie? Um, I believe, first of all, that uh, on a cautionary, cautionary note, we should be very careful questioning uh, the judgment of the court and the legality of the judge. Mm -hmm. And um, the lawyer is here. If anybody feels um, um, peeved with regards to um, the judgment of the court, there are processes you should follow. Mm -hmm. And um, we can discuss the judgment itself, yeah. uh, but um, um, that um, there are certain things that should have been done that, should have not, that, that, sh that, that was not done. Mm -hmm. um, we, in answering your question, we have to unpack the APC. Mm. We have to look at every um, um, doc tried to give us a context. The APC before 2018. And in analyzing the APC before 2018, you have to look at the political culture of the APC, which was based on some form of a communist ideology, mm. a selection process. The APC had about two or three conventions before the 2018 convention. They, had, they, even, ha they even had extraordinary congress, wherein the decision to expel the former vice president from the party was mm -hmm. ratified. Before that, the APC had a convention where they, they should have elected the um, leaders of the APC. And it ended up in selection after the leaders' um, campaign. That is where you had uh, the likes of Alaji Musata, the organizing secretary, mm -hmm. and other people we are told not to contest their time will come. When you stifle competition in the political party, democracy in the political party to reach to a point where it will explode. Mm. And this is the explos explosion we are seeing in the APC. For a very long time, one man 
as at the time the APC has been um, um, run by the same set of people for a very long time, their counterpart, the SLPP, has changed two or three executives over time to a democratic process. But the APC has not done that. They refuse to allow democracy to thrive. And this is the result we are seeing. Mm. Post 2018, a group of people, young people, called themselves reformers. They decided that they should um, encourage reformation within the party. There are other people, the old guards, refused to accept reformation. They were called all sorts of names. In fact, some were attacked as SLPP. At the end of the day, Alfred Peter Conte decided to go to court. And the decision of the court is clear that there should be 21-man committee, 14 from the, the party, and seven from Alfred Peter Conte. And that the chairman must come from Alfred Peter Conte. The court did not say Alfred Peter Conte should be the chairman. Mm -hmm. The chairman should come from Alfred Peter Conte's um, Fact side, faction. There are a lot of people who are experienced as uh, doc. Say you have Honorable Ibrahim Bundu in Alfred Peter Conte's uh, faction. Experienced people are there. Mm -hmm. I think they, 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 they should have discussed that and allowed the experienced people to add, to be the chairman of the party. Instead of us now telling us that the court did not tell Alfred Peter Conte not that to be the chairman, we said to come from the faction because the lawyers have so, what, so, so the that, lawyers have what they call in equity. Who comes for equity must come, come with cleaners. With, Alfred yeah. Peter Conte is the one who took the matter to court, and he won the matter. So as a result of that, some he, he, enjoys some, the, he enjoyed the judgment of the court. So I, I, um, 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 what, what lawyers would say the fruit the fruit of the judgment. But um, let us come into your question as Alfred Peter but Conte. A, just quickly, before, I'm coming. No, just quickly. Is experience really a problem there? Because like you're saying, if Alfred is surrounded by experienced politicians, who've, I mean, some of whom have sat in the uh, in, in NAC of the party, and um, they are still down, does Alfred not consult with them before making decisions? I, I, I think we must be honest here. Mm. I don't think experience is much of a problem in the interim committee. Mm. What is the problem is interest, mm. varied interest in the party. We are all aware it's a common sick. It's, a, it's an open uh, knowledge now that Alfred Peter Conte is being backed by the former vice president, um, Sam Sumana. An allegation he denied. Uh, well, he will deny that, but it's, we, are, we, are all, we, we all know we've seen uh, um, Sam Sumana supporting the party under Alfred Peter Conte's um, 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 committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all know that um, um, Abu Kagbo is supporting Samura Kamara. It's a fact. He has not put that out. Well, they have not put, out, put, put that out. But the way they are discussing, the, we are talking about choice of words. Mm. In their discussions, you will know which faction they are, which their interest. So these are all the things that are, in the, that are, that are um, at play. But I, we must also factor out mm. the dishonesty on the part of Alfred. We should not be afraid to factor out the dishonesty which on the is? part of Alfred. Alfred came in the guise as a Democrat. Mm. That he wants democracy in the party. That he wants uh, the party to be open, to be transparent. If you want democracy in a party, and you have a 21-man committee, the reason why you have an, um, a hard number is for simple majority at the end of the day. And you are not, if you are, if you are discuss, after discussing issues in the party, you subject them to vote in the committee. But if you are not subjecting what we've been getting from people within the committee is that decisions in the committee have not been subjected to vote because Alfred um, knows he will not get the number. So even within the committee, he has been behaving um, 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 undemocratically. So that is the dishonest side of Alfred. If you want, if you are a true Democrat, you should be able to support democracy, democratic principle, even when they are against you. And that is, the, that is where I would say what is happening in the APC should be concerned to all true Democrats in Sierra Leone. We, the people of Sierra Leone need credible alternative at this time. Are there specific references you would want to, to cite with regards Alf, the, 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 the accusation or allegation of Alfred, of Alfred being a dictator, being undemocratic? 
you even we, you even see it in the choice of words of Alfred. Mm. You fire into the other as the defunct executive, defunct and defeated, and so on and so forth. For me, division in political party should not be. I, I would not. I, I, I would not refer to division in political party as division. I we want to see diversity in political parties. There should be diverse group in the in the Republican now in the United States of America. You have a group called the Mega Republican. They are accepted. They have their own views. Political parties should begin in the SLPP. They, before 2018, they had a group called the Power Power. They were accepted and they pursued their interests. So they are in power. So within a political party, an ideology will, will crop up, and that ideology will be followed by many of you, and at the end of the day, their cause will come to pass. So it's not bad for people to, 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 to have um, agendas in the political party, short as reformation and so on and so forth. What is the problem is when people are being disingenuous, when people are being dishonest, that is the problem. In this case, I think Alfred has not been able to bring the party together. The reason for this interim committee is to pull the party together to, it's clear in the judgment, to ensure that can the lower Alfred, level can elections. Alfred, can Alfred, as a, as, 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 as a one man, bring the party together? That is where said, the question is, I mean, just allow me, Lan. the question is, Alfred already is seen as someone who is um, playing the game of a threat to the interest of the other people. You mentioned the Chief Samuel Samsumana. Alfred has been accused that al Haji Chief Samuel Samsumana is his benefactor. Alfred needed money for by-elections. Chief Samuel Samsumana came in and gave a hundred million euro. Alfred needed money for sensitization on the voter registration. Chief al Haji Samuel Samsumana came in and gave 80 million euro. All the other politicians, all the other big names, some would come with 25 million, 30 million. So, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think it's, it's, it should be a money game. It should not be a money game. It's not a gambling. <laughs> you, you don't transform the APC to a gambling institution, to a, a, a betting company. It's a political party. If somebody is coming with money, it is good for the functionality of the party. The party cannot run without, without money. Without money. It is good for the functionality of the party, but that should not be the reason to say, I am going to favor one as against other. No, he as, didn't say that. No, he well, uh, well, he, he said, said <laughs> that is why he's been accused, well, because Chief Samuel Samsumana is coming to the head of the party and not to the head of Alfred. Well, well we, we saw recently that um, Alfred unilaterally endorsed the coming back of Chief Samsumana into the party, mm -hmm. which is the new, because of them, um, 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 this problem had simmered down before now until the acceptance of Chief Samsumana again by Alfred, it created a whole political tension. Because according to Alfred, the court ordered that they should go and resolve all membership issues. And so <laughs> Chief al <Al-Hajj laughs> well, one of them. Now that uh, I won't comment on that because that is in front of the judge now. That is the reason for the injunction. Yes. That um, the, um, the other faction took the matter to court mm -hmm. for the judge to interpret his own judgment. Mm -hmm. So that because there, are, there, there, there have been lots of mis misinterpretation mm -hmm. by Alfred, by uh, the Secretary General in the institution. So let us leave that with the judge. For me, I think all of us, as uh, Doc said, we should not joke with the democracy of this country. And the democracy of the country starts with political parties. Mm. Start with political parties. If the political, I think it is even anchored in the constitution that political, the policies of political parties should be aligned with democratic principles. Mm. But if we are seeing that our political parties are not allowing democracy, they are not allowing dissenting voices, it will reach to a point when there will be explosion. And that is the problem in the APC now. I don't think Alfred is much of a problem. Alfred is an individual. APC has been an institution, has been an institution for over uh, four decades. So we have, to, we have to, to understand that the political culture, for me, it is the political culture in the APC is refusing change. The change to democracy. Like for the APC to be more democratic, I agree that they've been, they have been, uh, before the decision of the court, they have been, they, they amended the constitution of the APC, which is good to ensure that there is democracy. But we used to have a party where one man was the end all and be all of the party. 
We used to have a party where one man would sit down and decide to make a decision. If you don't support the decision, the next two, the next two days you'll be removed from NAC if you're a member of the National Advisory Council. We saw situations where Kainde Bangu and others were removed from NAC because they had other interests. So because the APC has not been able to uphold democracy for the longest period, that is the problem now we are seeing. Somebody who sit down and say the APC is um, quote unquote Kalamante party. This is what you have when you say your party is Kalamante party. But I believe for we going to if the APC is not prepared by February, March next year, if, they have, if the, the house is not in order, then they are, they are, we, are create, we are creating a situation where in, uh, won't, the people won't do, be, do, have credible Do you see the tax being laid for VAT redemption? Well, about. for now, I've not seen anything. Hmm. By tomorrow, they should have uh, gone to... Um, 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 registration. Uh, um, registration, registration no, the, the lower level, prepare for the lower level. And after the lower level election, there will be issues also. Court issues will emanate. We all saw that in the SLPP prior to 2018, when uh, Ali Bangua took the SLPP to court after lower level election, because it is the lower level election that will determine the flag bearer. By that time, flag bearers will know that, oh, I have the strength. So Alfred was preparing tomorrow, sorry, was preparing for the re-registration and verification of membership tomorrow, and Honorable Abu Kabo was preparing for the lower level elections. Well, so, you see, so these are, these, these, so, these are. So it is good that the court has slammed an injunction. I just hope that by the next two or three days, the court, the judge, will not um, tarry on for a very long time. I just hope that the, the, the judge will be able to inter because the, the, um, the judgment is um, um, Justice Fisher's judgment. He should be able to, to, to interpret his own judgment in no time. Well, the, 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 the judge has slammed the injunction until Wednesday. When we hope that by Wednesday, yeah. this issue would have, uh, would have been resolved. Ra Ra Rashid, <laughs> Liga League. Let, 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 let's look at um, all of what is happening. Where are these um, things living? First off, the political rights of those in the APC. Yes, um, it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm grateful. But let me instantly make a disclaimer that right. I'm not here as a political spokesman. Nobody is invited here as a politician. Oh, right. Well, I invited you all yes. with the thought that you are not politicians. <laughs> you are yes. not politicians. Yes. So we, we have to make a disclaimer hurriedly. And, and we, we are here as experts to yes. discuss um, yes. an issue that has to do with a political party. A national institution. Yes. And that issue, if not dealt with, has the proclivity to undermine our body politic and, of course, even our security of yeah. the nation. I think that was what interested me to be here. Go ahead. Now, I'm going to take a position that is, um, you know, and, and that's what we have, we, have, we have looked into, even as we, um, I was coming here, my, my team had a whole discussion about this, and I have here five or six, five people on institution that we are going to blame for all of this. So for the problem they, in the APC. Yes, yes, I want you to just allow me, give me like one, I mean, five minutes, let me just I'll, deal, I'll deal with this quickly. Right. Come in, I'll come in. You yes. also allow me. Go ahead. So, so, so now, because again, it's because people are, we are, we are always scattered about the, who, is, who is really at fault here. Yeah. Some say, Peter, I mean, Afri Peter Conte, some say um, Abu Kagbo, some PPRC. But we have um, laid out clearly what mm. we've seen here and who, who and who we should call out on this issue. Go ahead. And then they should really take the lead in reforming and ensuring that this needs to the board. Let's start first with the big the big uh, man in the, in the nation, the chief justice, mm -hmm. my boss, as a lawyer. First, we, we, we're calling on him out on this issue because when a matter of such nature is before a judicial system to which he is the head, mm -hmm. and knowing fully well the implications on the security of the nation, on the time of the elections and all of that, he ought to supervise and ensure speed in adjudicating him. That is not being seen. Mm. And I think we are calling on him to make sure whoever he assigns that case to. Could it be deliberate? No, I, I'm not, we're not saying that it's deliberate. We're saying we have not seen speed in this whole litigation before the court. Mm. Even, we're talking about even with the full matter and even this current um, interlocutor application that has been made. It was a mere application to determine whether in fact what this 
God created chairman is doing, is correct or not? It's an interlocutor application. It should be done with speed. But often now we're seeing delay. And that has affected the timelines of this very court regarding this party mm. as to its activities. That's a cavalier. And who heads the judiciary is the chief justice. He ought to have said, hey, who is dealing with this matter? You know there is a timeline. What are you waiting for in determining this matter? That's what you want to see from the chief justice. So the judiciary, you know, no, let me, let me, so the judiciary let me, should be blamed at the head that carries the crown. Takes yeah, the yes, because we're saying, in fact, we learned that this judge mm -hmm. who is dealing with this matter is overwhelmed with so many political cases. So again, he might say, well, I have so much in my file. So why, 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 why overload a particular judge with all of these key cases that have so much, you know, proclivity to likely undermine our state governance and, of course, our security? So we want to see the chief justice take responsibility and ensure that this judge does its work. It's not to be delayed. Time is running out. People are getting angry. The more this, the, the judiciary is cavalier, the more people take and believe that something is happening and they may see the, 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 the judiciary as complicit, mm. and then public distrust comes in. And who knows where that will take us? So I'm calling the chief justice to say, mm -hmm. sir, you have a blame here. You hear the judiciary, you provide the judiciary, ensure that that judge does its work on time. Secondly, I come to Justice Adrian Fisher. Adrian Fisher, you know the last time I was here when he passed the judgment, it's a brilliant judgment. I praised him because his goal was to inject democracy into, like my colleague here um, is saying, into a party that doesn't believe perhaps for a longer time on this kind of mantra. Mm -hmm. So we welcome that decision. But he missed it on one point. Which and that was, was my emphasis the other day. And today, we are seeing that, that, that being a problem now, creating a monster. So the, the whole goal about the judgment was to inject democracy. Yes. But then, see how we ended it with the judgment. He, he opened a, a, a Pandora's box where he allowed a chairman to come to the throne by appointment. You dismissed a chairman based on selection, and now you allow a chairman to come and head by selection. So you defeated your very essence and foundation of your judgment. Mm. Why? What was so wrong for Fisher to have said the 21 com man committee should meet and elect among themselves a chairman? That was much more decent because in democracy was what he was his target. So he would have ended also with democracy to say, the Roman committee, I will not allow you to, to appoint. You will elect among yourself. Mm. Today, we may not have had a Peter Conte that is a monster. If that was done by Fisher, I'm talking here with my mind. I'm a lawyer. You may not like me, but tomorrow, it stands at history that Rashid said something. I said it here on your program, mm. that he missed it on the framework he created and allowed selection to happen instead of election. And that selection has created this problem. Yes. So now, Takwante is saying, in fact, I defeated them. In fact, in fact, to make it worse, he now selected himself. Because the court allowed it to happen. He selected himself. See now, he came with the mentality that he's a godfather. And, 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 the, rest of, and the rest of the, the, the members of the committee did, did not object to him. Because the court said so. The court said, among him, his own faction, he must have a chairman. So the court actually appointed him. That's the point. See now? That judgment was faulty in the sense that it did not end up with democracy. Mm. So I blame him on that. Now, I'm blaming him also on, on the fact that, okay, now let's manage the situation. We have made a mess. Now, complaint has come before you again on how this court created chairman is, is not going in line with your judgment. That should have been a speedy thing to look at. You don't delay with it because it's, it's going to undermine your very orders. And that was his opportunity to have now perhaps make a, a, you know, an adjustment to now go back to saying, if you deal with my judgment, I will finish you. Because I want democracy to hold and thrive. And I think that but, statement is in the injunction granted. Yes, but, but, then, but then here is the delay. Because the delay, because the delay is, is happening. Mm. And now what we're saying is, we don't want to see, in fact, to me, people are welcome the, 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 the injunction. I'm critical about it. Because that was not really what it should have, ought to have done. It's to decide the matter. It's an important matter. Why do you to inject again and stop everything again? Just call Peter Conte and give a judgment. Whether he's doing it right or not, we have seen him do three things that are appalling. One, he has even sacked 
the very Secretary General of the ITGC, does he have powers to so do? One. Two, he has reinstated Samsumana as against the constitution of the party. Does he have powers to so do? Three, he has, he has nominated interim chairpersons and district coordinators. Does he have power to so do? These are questions that the judge ought to have speedily addressed. Because he is becoming a monster. He created that monster. And he should and have the courage to deal with the monster he has created. Whether, it, in fact, what he is doing is in line with the, the judgment he is giving or not. That delay we are seeing, and that cavalier is not good for our body politic, and that's why people are blaming the judiciary. Because Fisher had to, should be, should be tough on this. It's an opportunity for him to now say, I'm not a party to this, and I'm going to hold him to account for what he has done. Because that's not the motive of this judgment, is to, to return over this judgment committee and ensure that APC gets to a smooth sail at the end of the day. That is the blame I have for him. Let's go to Africa Conte quickly. Why am I blaming him here? He's come for democracy. My colleagues have said, said that. I'm not going to belabor the points. That was his goal. Now you have the opportunity to now show democracy. But here is his first statement that he's seen them as the defeated ones, creating a very, you know, I mean, unfriendly environment. Could, with could that one. not be seen as, uh, as frustration, as him coming out because he's been frustrated um, by the very people who um, were resisting the change, mm -hmm. who were resisting that um, um, reformation from a party, mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. you all have said, a party that did not practice or believe in democracy, and now he has brought in that democratic mm -hmm. um, tenet in the party. So the guys are saying, wait, we do not want this. We've never enjoyed that in the party. This is how we've run, um, run the party, and this is how we're going to run with the APC. So there, there, there have been... Um, Resistance to change. We agree that that is something that we cannot run away from. There must have been some faction also not happy with all of this. Mm -hmm. But he, he has a mandate here. Remember, there is a judgment roadmap, okay, leading to the convention. So I bet that has nothing much to do other than ensuring that that roadmap set by the judge is adhered to. Now, but look at him bringing new things into the whole ball game. All right, and these things have implications. How can you sack a, a, a secretary general, all right, created also by the court, in a way? Because remember, he gave the, them a 14 man, you know, a team to now choose from parliamentary and the like. So, does he have power to do that? How do you appoint intimate intim coordinator and all of these things? So, he is going beyond his powers, and that has to be checked by the court. Now, let's go to Ab Ab Abdul Kant, Abdul Kabul. Just Abdul quickly, before we go to Honorable Abdul Kabul. Abdul Kabul. Alfred Peter yes. Conte, just before we move over to Honorable Abdul Kabul. On Alfred Peter Conte, you know, at some point I, I engaged him and I asked him a question about whether or not he's interested in the chairmanship of the, of the party. Mm. He did not deny. Mm. No, 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 he, confirm. He was, he was just looking at when the time is right. Yes, so these are all the things. And I, and I think. And I think we, we will not blame him much, but we will blame the court. Because mm -hmm. if we had been an elected chairman, perhaps all of this would not have happened. Now, let's go to Kabbo's faction. Mm -hmm. Now, I am blaming them also, and my organization is blaming them also, because, you see, Abdul Kabbo has the powers at the moment. You don't want to joke with that. Mm -hmm. He is the chairman of that, the ITGC. So even though you are not happy with him, what, 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 what fine line will you find in ensuring that you don't also widen the divide. At the same time, you don't allow him to just bulldoze you people. It's about trying to also have a fine balance and ensuring that you work with this monster, quote unquote, and ensuring that you don't go in ways that will now undermine and split the party as we are seeing now. To me, that, that, that willingness to go beyond themselves is not really being seen at the moment. Lastly, let me hit on PPRC. Mm -hmm. I've heard about PPRC, I've heard the, 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 the debacle between um, the institution and, of course, um, Afrepta Quante. It, it's so unfortunate. And I'm blaming PPRC here because PPRC is the body set up to, to, to register and, of course, regulate political parties in the country. The defense um, the chairman is giving that they are not really, they are like an ad hoc mechanism, mm -hmm. does not really um, hold tight. It's, it's untenable because, remember, it's still dealing with them on other issues. So I don't understand what it what means by well, it's another argument. I cannot. I will take the different. I will take uh, the middle. You were dealing with them before now. If they were hard work, then don't deal with them. But you're dealing with them. So if you have an issue, take a position and let us see from your perspective who among this faction is causing the problem. He 
cannot be saying, well, I will stay here, I will stay here, I will stay here, I will stay in the middle. That, that is not really helping out. That's why today we are seeing him having a bash as well. Because he doesn't have, have the, the God's power to take a stance. He personally must determine among the two factions who is causing the problem and make a decision because you're regulating political parties. But the people you, say, you, you, you listen to the people as a chairman yes. saying, of course, um, their powers do not cover the ITGC. I, I disagree. B because I, for that's him, what I'm that's an irregular organ, that's what, and that organ is created by the cops. Yeah, so, so that is what I'm, I'm contending now, that that argument is, is fallacious. In what sense? Because you are already dealing with them, and you have been dealing with them. He's sitting in the middle in, of his In box. many other issues, you have come, they have come before you and you have decided on issues before them. So you cannot now say, on oh, this issue, well, I'm, I'm seeing them as an irregular organ. What, are you, what do you mean? It's a court function backed up I mean, organ. So it's legal. And they fall under your purview because they are now running, in a way, a political party. You cannot say they cannot, you cannot, you cannot open over, over their affairs. Otherwise, you're creating chaos. That's why today you see him reply to uh, 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 the chairman, he reply also to uh, Abu Kagbo. So what's happening now, you are creating, you know, legitimacy for both factions to believe that they have the, your support and in so widening the, the gap. So I don't see his, his approach as wise. Let him make a decision to say you are, at, uh, you are doing the wrong thing and I will not side you on this. Rather than just hanging there and playing it cool between two factions. So, in our view, we are calling on all of these five players do the needful, particularly for three reasons. One, you don't want, we don't want to have, have a dangerous president. What's happening now is going to be a dangerous president. If any government comes again, they might use this president and affect other parties as well down the line. Two, it has also the, 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 the proclivity to undermine multi partyism. We don't even know if APC is going to compete. Everybody is still, I mean, not sure by, by what is going on. And that will affect multi partyism. So, I don't say multi partyism. Stopping the APC or the APC itself, stop, I mean, stopping itself from. So I just told you the problem, and, I, and the people I believe are contributing to it. Mm. So, let them now sit down and do their own part. Lastly, let's also don't, I mean, to be oblivious of the fact that these kind of issues have proclivity to undermine the state security. This is a main opposition party. It has fallen in millions. You don't know what people might, might look at and then react on these issues. So let's be clear on this. Let's do our part to make sure the main opposition party functions and competes in the election in a healthy way to save our democracy and our body Rashid, politic is, down the line. Is the APC fit for purpose in this era of politics? It's a tough question. I believe all political parties in this country are fit for purpose. As long as they are registered and they have a clear cut agenda, they are. But I believe also that in this peculiar situation, remember, as I speak to you, there, is, there are no executive organs, so to speak, in this political party. So it's a, it's a room for, for improvement and a room for change. And the, the roadmap of judgment is clear. So we need to have the court come again and, and interpret the decision and then give a stern warning to the chairman and the IGCC members that I, I, I created you to uh, work together. There is no faction I, I, I envisage. Mm -hmm. And if you dare to have factions, I will hold you for contempt. That has to come out clear. I hope the judgment on Wednesday will speak to what I'm saying because that is going to help APC go through their roadmap and eventually compete in the 2023 elections. Famous, um, is the APC a serious party? I mean, in, its, in the context at this point. Well, um, APC will always be a serious party in our body But um, at, the, at the current the, the state of the APC, you would tend to say that um, they are not serious for the forthcoming 2023 elections because of the issues we've just discussed. Now I believe um, the APC should have been talking, there are issues they should have been talking about. We have the um, 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 proportional representation, which is which um, the state is forcing down the throats of the people. The APC should have been talking about that. We have um, 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 the recent um, 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 data that has been out uh, by the National um, Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone. The APC should have been talking about that, coming with position statement. We have um, about 270,000 Sierra Leoneans who, because of, um, according to the ECSL, 
because of multiple data they've been delisted. Mm -hmm. I think they should, be, they, should, they should be talking about that, on which basis they have been delisted, on which um, mm -hmm. issues concerning um, the economy, the health, they should have been talking about, about, about this as at now. I don't think they are posing any serious threat because if this, when your party is in order, say what you may, the, the situation of the, S, the APC is, is very, very unique. It has never happened in our mm. political, uh, the, the political infighting in political parties. The SLPP, they had their problems coming to 2018, but they had, they had a functional party. They had a functional party. The executive was there. The executive of the party was there, functional. The APC has no functional party. What is happening no, with, the, with, the for, elder, so for, with the elders and the big six of the APC? <laughs> well, the big six, the big six <laughs> itself, the big six itself is a faction. It's a political faction. For me, it is not a bad idea for, to, for you to have uh, people coming together to say that we are big six and we want to see amongst ourselves um, uh, who is most competent to lead us, I think they, that is their own right. The big six, the political, the, the elders in the party, what they would do, they would just offer advice. It's up to the, the, the interim committee to listen to the advice of the party. Um, for me, the PPRC, the statement of the PPRC chairman is very clear, that uh, he doesn't want to be seen overruling the decision of the court. So he's very, very, very much circumspect in taking decisions. He cannot say this um, person is banned, this person is in a tight situation. So he's dealing with everyone. So uh, for me, what I found um, um, recently, what I found um, um, very, very absurd is the strong-worded strong um, um, letter. letter. We have all talked about Alfred Peter Conte's um, choice of words. Mm -hmm. Strong worded letter to Alfred Peter Conte from signed by the PPIC chairman. I think um, that one is very, very absurd mm -hmm. and below the belt. It is not good for our politics. I, I was not expecting somebody, I have huge respect for the PPIC chairman to have written sort of a, a vexatious letter um, to um, Alfred Peter Conte. You are creating a situation in which you will not be trusted by Alfred Peter Conte's team. You are also creating a situation in which you will not be trusted by the other party. So I think that letter should not have come from the people. We've seen fights. We've seen fights in political parties. But the PPIC chairman before now, Justice Toller Thompson, Justice Hamilton, they've been very, very, very careful in coming out and even making um, 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 statements on these issues. Coming out to make statements, I think, is bold. But you have to be very careful what to say and what not to say, because you are a buffer in a situation of war, in a, 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 like vis-a-vis like, uh, -vis the, the situation in the APC. The, so um, the I think we are. The APC. Uh -huh. Is this a fight between Chief Al Haji Samuel Samsumana versus Sam, um, Doctor Samuel Matthew Wilson Kamara using the phases of for, Alfred? For me, Conte for me, uh, for me, I, I would say it's a proxy war. These guys are used as proxy. That, that's the bigger fight. Alfred Peter Conte is a proxy. Um, um, uh, Abu Kago and his team, they are proxy. So this is a proxy war. The guys, they are, they are guys behind fear in the war. So for me, I will not, um, let, us wait, uh, let us wait to see what Fish, uh, Justice Fisher, the Honorable Justice Fisher will say. But I will not sit here to be um, saying that the Honorable Justice Fisher was wrong on this or wrong on that. I think. Yeah, is it, um, 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 my, um, um, um. Rashid is a lawyer. If there is anything on towards with regards to judgments, I think there are legal process the, the APC or the other faction could have taken, maybe to appeal or other things. But um, uh, to be questioning the judgment here and there, here and there, I think um, it's somehow not upholding uh, the respect and integrity of the judiciary. Dr. Bangura. Um, where do you see this war of calumny putting the APC for 2023? Clearly, it's a part of perdition. Hmm. For me, I think the APC should now actually be trying to mend in whatever, whatever patches that the, the nets of the party has. For me, that is why, first of all, I think if we are here to speak to them and they are listening to us, the first thing they have to do is to narrow their differences. And if they don't narrow their differences, they cannot stand. In politics, it's unity. United you stand. Divided, you are going to fall. As well as for me, 
The party should go all out. Whatever interests that people, uh, individuals do have, they should be secondary. The party should be primary. And it is for the democracy of this nation. So therefore, whether it is some, uh, some rock camera, whether it is some Sumana, whether it is this or that, we don't care. What we are here for as experts is just to advise that for the sake of democracy, as a political institution, because now, basically, there is no opposition taking place mm -hmm. in, in, in governance. That is, the, 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 the ruling party is just going ahead, as um, um, Dixon just mentioned here. There are a series of issues that actually the opposition party should be taking. But now, the infighting, the intra-fighting itself is actually distracting the APC. And so this distraction, and if, um, as we are saying here, that uh, still, for, for me, I think uh, the justice, uh, Adrian Fisher, should actually speed up, expedite this entire process so that the APC party can come together, and then they can choose a flag bearer. And then, if not, then I don't see any way forward mm. for the APC party come 2023. Um, um, mm -hmm. with all of what is happening, how do we get the APC? I mean, to, to be a democratic party that creates a room for dissenting views, but at the end of the day, there must be that ideology that everyone works towards achieving in the party. Um, thank you very much again. I could recall um, <clears throat> around 2017, 2018, I had um, a radio, sorry, a television discussion and um, on that panel, I was there with, um, what's his name? Something Jallo. Um, I think it was, by then he was um, in the Ministry of Information. Yes. I Yes. I said to him, if you refuse to fix your problems in this party, you are going to face a situation that will spiral out of control. Mm -hmm. And what he said to me, Ephraim, how do we fix something that is not broken? But I know today, if, if he could recall that conversation, he would be saying to himself, oh, yes, that is why he's a reverend. I think, <laughs> uh, but I was not a prophet of doom. Mm. Because I speak from the lens of democracy. And um, I would always go to the Constitution. For instance, earlier I had mentioned 35.4. Now I'm looking at 35.2. The internal organization of a political party shall conform mm. to democratic principles and its aims, objectives, purposes, and programs shall not contravene or be inconsistent with any provisions of this constitution. Mm. We, 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 you know, the situation that is happening um, in the party now is the, um, is it the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> That's what we're seeing now. You have been dictatorial. I'll go to court for uh, uh, intervention. I need redress. Which was, it's a fine thing, which is something that I always advocate. If you have anything that is contrary to what you believe in, go to the courts. Even if we don't trust the court, let's keep pestering the court. One day soon they'll come up with something that will change the situation. Now, you've gone to the courts. I was expecting. Yes, the court said, from amongst your faction. But you know, there's this, there's this concept. The gun that liberates should not rule. Mm. In fact, if, if, if Peter Conte had been magnanimous enough mm -hmm. to say, you know, I took the party to court, and I, I, I have, they, they, they now said the, the group that I have can decide on who the chair is. Even if you are selecting, select somebody else. Because mm -hmm. you are already okay. an object of um, conflict because you took the others to court. And they're not going to allow you to succeed. Mm -hmm. That is how we've operated our politics in this country. The moment we have tension, whatever I do now is to ensure you fail. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's vice versa. And the frustration that, that uh, uh, Peter Conte is experiencing now is something he brought upon himself. And we, we also look forward to uh, um, politicians within the APC that understand the dynamics of democracy 
and they are also interested in the progress that their party will make. And that is why, in the analysis given by, by lawyer Rashid, um, Honorable Ablai Conte cannot also be um, absolved completely of blame. Because if you know the dangers ahead, you will also look for ways and means to ensure you reconcile your differences. So both of them mm. are complicit in a way. Mm. Now, uh, um, we, we see the, 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 the evident danger, especially for our democracy. <coughs> it is high time these guys started thinking about coming together to ensure they save our democracy from this kind of mess. Just quickly, um, already, I mean, I see all of us here, by the way, have been um, branded that we are all APC. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the beauty, yeah, said, the said, beauty said, of said, democracy. Said, 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 the constitution said. gives you the right to express opinion. Um, you know, there is just one message I would love to read um, from one of the um, former spokesperson of the party. And this is what he is saying. The APC is doomed, my brother. The two factions in the ITGC will never, ever work together. Personal interest continues to prevail at the expense of the party's interest. We are way too divided to be able to join forces to win the 2023 elections. The animosity, ignorance of destination, and things is deep-rooted. I don't see how we can conceivably call the APC a government in waiting. Who is fooling who? The former leader and chairman ran the affairs of the party very, very poorly. ABK placed us squarely in this Samsumana mess. Worse yet, he <coughs> failed to put measure in place during his tenure to identify and forestall problems that are now befalling the party. The current impasse is not a unique problem in the APC. In 2005, before EBK emerged as mm -hmm. the leader of the APC, we had similar problems. It has been 20 years since, with pretty much the same executive in place with no steps taken to prove the party from these problems. ABK was a joke and still is. All the problems and resistance coming from the Honorable Abdul Kagbu faction is filled by him and his cabal of old executive, all of whom lacks what it takes to run a party at this day in age. All former Secretary General does well is to tell us about what happened in 1951 politics of Sierra Leone. Who cares? <laughs> I cannot believe these jokers have the nerve to want to have a say after such dismissal <coughs> performance as executive and after losing an election. How can Honorable Abdul Kabu comfortably believe that he is equal to the chairman? Then why is he chairman? For heaven's sake, this is an interim body, an irregular body charged with making the party regular again. To that end, you should expect some undemocratic steps no. here or there. In fact, I have had some comrades say, George Fisher is SLPP for pronouncing a ruling sorrowful. Um, interesting. Almost all of the other messages here are political, <laughs> very political, either accusing us or accusing the SLPP of the problems. But let me just take a message from Dr. Um, Freddie Lawson, um, who is based in the UK. He's also a lawyer who's been following the show. He says the judge, in his wisdom, seemed to have done his best. In making the said orders, it was clear from the outset that the composition of the ITGC was a problem. Mm -hmm. It would be a miracle to get the victor and the vanquished to now work together for the good of the party. Mm -hmm. yeah. Understanding and interpreting the orders are the basis in this stalemate. Mm -hmm. An interpretation of what a simple majority is, an example. There are no qualifying provisions, whether the majority is that for the 21-man committee sitting at all times or those present at a meeting. In the absence of such qualifications and clarification, perspective interpretation is subjective of the mischief rule. Mm. I have highlighted these ambiguities in my previous contributions in your program. I suggested then that the chairman should go back to the judge asking for a variation of his orders. It is good the judge has now used his discretion with an injunction to make further orders. The inability of the two groups is a derivative of the defects of the others. I hope his move now will improve the situation. Mm. It needs to be robust and more detailed. Mm. 
otherwise it will be a fruitless effort. Addendum to the conversation, it is easy to raise the issue of legality of whether or not the judge was a competent authority and that of the chairman. Why then did no one file a counter legal yeah, suit? Such easy. assertions are disingenuous and unhelpful. Exactly. Right? Um, I think I'm going to hold the messages there. I, I mean, I've only taken two. Um, that's clearly, mm -hmm. I mean, um, spoke to what we're discussing without tagging us here. So, so I mean, gentlemen, we have to round off the conversation. Um, Rashid, I'm going to start off with you. Okay. What would you consider um, the, the strategies now to be deployed by the APC if they can, I mean, if they should be considered as a party um, or as a force to contest against the SLPB in 2023? Yes, so um, I'm going to your question quickly, but I think I... I will um, adopt the uh, views to a large extent of the legal person that uh, mm -hmm. sent us text yeah. um, on the judgments. So, um, by the way, um, Dixon, let's be clear, we as experts can analyze judgments of the mm -hmm. court, all right? It's within our purview. And as lawyers also, it's good practice. In South Africa, many, when judgments are out, lawyers critique them, you know, not necessarily appealing against them, but they have a debate in class, you can even discuss it and have groups. So it's good because if just are aware that we can critique their judgments, it can also help in a way to, for them to go deep down and get good judgment because okay. they know, I mean, the public can also have a, I mean, a critique on them. All right, yeah, but nothing stops anybody from appealing against um, the, their decisions if you think it's erroneous. So what we are doing here basically is just a critique of um, the, perhaps the loopholes in our assessment of Justice Adrian Fisher. Like he hardly said, lack of details also in terms of fleshing out all these things. So he has an opportunity. So Justice Fisher has an opportunity now in this judgment. I hope so this judgment will be detailed now to now get everyone back on track, to now commit to the roadmap he has set for APC and getting their leadership up to the, their convention. It's a roadmap he set out. Mm. So there are hiccups along the line. What can he do now to now open up and be clear, and then have, again, this committee on track. But again, much more. So apart from what he will be doing on Wednesday, much more the committee will have to come together. Unity is the way forward. There is no, that's why I blame um, Abdul Conte's faction as well. Abu Kabu. Yeah, Abu Kabu, sorry. Because to me, it's, it's um, fire cannot put off fire. You know, I mean, insult, it just adds insult to injury. So, how do we have a compromise with this in quote monster that we have as chairman? It, it just quickly, is Alfred really the problem, unity. or is it that the other side? I mean, it's looking at Alfred. Where have you been? We've been here all along. <laughs> I mean, this is what we've yeah. given our lives to. We've we've always been around. You're yes. just coming in, and you're the leader. Is that not the crisis? Yeah, but but then what what makes their, their case a little bit stronger than Alfred is the fact that they seem to be following the roadmap of the judge, unlike Alfred Peter Conte, who we've seen now doing things that perhaps are not even on the roadmap. <laughs> See now, that is why perhaps is people that, are... Is that so? Yes, I'll give Kabo, it to you. Yes. Honorable Abdul Kabo summoned meetings, mm -hmm. and in those meetings, Alfred said, oh, he's inviting the, 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 the 2018 presidential candidates, one of the flag bearers, Dr. Samura Kamara. Honorable Abdul Kabo is saying, Alfred is calling meetings, and he said he's inviting flag bearers, but he has never invited Samuel Kamara. He said he's inviting the others, including Sam, Sam Sumana. Yes, so, so here, here, is what, here is what is key mm. in all of what's happening. So we call for unity yeah. for all of them. But then you see, the chairman has a roadmap given to him as his pretenders over this 21 committee. Mm -hmm. So your, your duty is to ensure that that roadmap is followed. It's a court judgment. That's why, in fact, the application before the court is on contempt. Mm, okay. That, in fact, he has not been following the roadmap right. as laid out by the judge you know, towards the APC. So my concluding remarks would be, unity is the way out. All right. They need to come together, and then we hope that the judge will speed this, this judgment on Wednesday and will be clear, more clearer, so that at the very least, they all know what to do going forward Dixon? as a should pretend. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Lossi uh, <coughs> He said that nothing prevents the party, instead of us casting blame on the judge, nothing prevents the parties <coughs> from filing counter motion. And that summed it all up for this judgment to be set aside and so on and so forth. And um, on the issue of um, political party unity, I think there should be political party unity. But there should also be 
diversity within the political parties. If we are talking about democracy, those in the political party must be able to bend backward over to accept dissenting voices. What has been hindering political democracy in this part of the world is because people, look at us discussing issues, people are just um, <laughs> branding <laughs> us. <laughs> branding us. So be, well, I'm used to, I'm used to branding. Yeah, I've been branded as um, SLPP before. I'm now been branded as a APC. Uh, in fact, a senior colleague called me yesterday and told me that somebody said that you are an unrepentant APC. I said, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I said, good. When APC was in power, I was branded as an unrepentant SLPP. So um, for me, I think um, the APC should be very, very serious. Mm -hmm. they have, uh, we have about six months or so to June, seven months, to June 2023 elections. If they are not able to put their house in order by February, they are denying the people of this country the chance of a credible alternative. All right. Dr. Bangura? Yeah, my concern has always been the issue of there is no opposition, formidable opposition taking place. This is the concern. And for a democracy, for it to thrive, actually there should be a formidable uh, opposition. And the strongest opposition but party... But there is NGC. There's yeah, PDP. but that's what I'm saying. There's Strong, the strongest uh, opposition party which can actually make noise and then uh, seek uh, wherever things are not going right is stifling itself. And so therefore, that is why for me, the members of the All People's Congress should actually do an introspection and narrow their differences. And whatever self or personal interest that people do have whether for themselves or for their party, uh, their own uh, quote-unquote flag bearers that they have in mind, I think the interest of the party should uh, be the surmounting uh, desire for everything. And so with that in mind, they should be ready. And it is a game of uh, compromise. In politics, there are times when you don't get all what, what you want, but what you bargain for. And when you think uh, about the bigger picture, and what they are losing as a party that has been in opposition, and if they continue to be like this, they are bound to be in perpetual opposition. It, and it, then, it, it appears the kingmakers are positioning themselves to be more powerful than the king when they make one. Well, I don't know. <laughs> from whichever situation you look at it, why is the, under, the underlying factor is this, that whoever, whether kingmaker or king themselves, they have to actually think the bigger picture All right. of the party, or else they will continue to be in opposition. Reverend? Um, Mr. Bangua, democracy is always my focus, mm. especially because of the institution that I work for. No matter what happens, APC should do everything in their own interest to ensure democracy works in their party. You see, we, we are always concerned because if from within you have this challenge, you cannot come together to push a common agenda, when you are in charge, it's the same situation that will happen. It will hinder or affect um, the, uh, the way we address or handle issues in our country. Mm. So it's in the best interest of APC to ensure democracy works in their party. Like I, I, I referenced that, that conversation, it was, I think it was podium with um, Jalo. Mm. Of course, now they know that there are so many things that are broken in the party. Let them do their best to fix it. The people of this country, are interested in seeing their democracy work. And um, through the conduit of political parties, we know that is a means through which their democracy can work. Mm. APC owes this country a lot, and they should do everything to mend fences and ensure that we avoid this kind of situation. And uh, let, me, let me say this. In, when SLPP had their problems, we were part of those that were discussing mm. the issues and proffering solutions. I don't know why they did not call us SAPP then. <laughs> so they were discussing as APC, and they are calling us SLPP. APC. I am a Sierra Leonean. I, I don't mind that kind of um, mm. 
description. It's, it's up to anybody to have his opinion. Mm -hmm. When I come to this kind of program, I speak my conscience. And I've always done that from the one. So, All again, right. APC, put your house in order and ensure democracy works in your party. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure having all four of you here. I've enjoyed the privilege of your time tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you who've um, been part of the conversation, those of you who expressed your concerns, your thoughts, um, through the AYV News Facebook page. We appreciate all of you, and um, we welcome your views. But we were unable to go through the, them because um, it was going to be very, very excruciating for me to have scrolled through um, those messages to take the ones that really, I mean, speak to the issue we discussed here um, tonight. But in case you miss a part of this, don't forget you will have the opportunity to watch a repeat of it on Thursday at 10 p.m. But next week, same time, same station, a fresh edition of this show comes up. The show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samia Wise Bangura. And until we meet again next time, take care of yourself. Have a lovely night. And up next is our AYV Primetime News. Until then, good night. <laughs>